What up, what up, it's Dana. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you basically the neuroscience of overeating and how to stop overeating. So this is gonna be a good video for those of you doing InfoFit, your macros, all this kind of stuff thinking it's a be all and all diet that you're gonna be shredded forever. And I know a lot of people do this and there aren't like one best diet. However, I'm gonna tell you how to stop overeating. And basically this is an advanced video. So let's get into this. And by no means, I'm not saying I have a PhD in neuroscience or I'm a neuroscience expert at all. In fact, I'm gonna make the video simple and easy to understand. Now let's get into it. I'm gonna cover six steps. Step number one, fix your environment. Meaning when I say fix your environment, just fix your environment to the exposure of junk food in particular, because let's face it, no one really overeats on a healthy, quote unquote, healthy diet with a lot of fruit and vegetables. So a lot of this video is gonna be about junk food and how to avoid it. Now, basically clear the exposure of all the junk food in your house. In your kitchen, if you have, say, cakes lying out, guess what, you will eat it, no matter how much willpower you think you have, it will play on your mind and you'll eventually eat it, right? It basically sends a signal to your brain and it activates a region in your brain where your brain actually starts thinking more about our food and guess what, it enters a bid. And like I said, I don't wanna to get too much into this, into the science things, but it enters a bid and guess what that junk food does with it. The reason being is because if you think back to our ancestors, they had to actually like chop things up, climb up trees in order to get the food, which is the energy, right? And then in their head think, okay, is it gonna take me more energy to climb up this tree and get this piece of fruit or whichever food, and then what that food is gonna give me back meaning? And let me use an exam another example. If they're gonna, if the hunters are gonna travel on a horse or something, they should travel quite far, right? And it's no guarantee that they're gonna get this energy from a deer. And if they don't find one, they wasted this energy. So this is like they're calculating the bit in their head as well. That's just like a little example. But the point I'm trying to make here is that by clearing out the junk food exposure to just this awful food that is gonna make you overeat, you will start losing more weight, right? It's just simple. That's how you stick to a healthy diet because if you have junk food lying around, people are offering you take takeaways, all this kind of stuff, you will not stick to a diet. Now. Another thing when it comes to fix your environment and talking more about junk food is this. The reason you're attracted to junk food, same as this amount of energy the food gives you, compared to the amount of energy it takes for you to get the food, is because junk food actually contains a lot of calories despite the amount of effort it takes for you to get. And the brain is more attracted to foods, you wouldn't guess it, high in refined carbohydrates and fat, right? That's why when you eat something like pizza, it is a lot of refined or even carbohydrates and fat joined together. For example, if you eat, say, rice cakes, right? Because I like rice cakes and rice cakes are, some people say it's not even that unhealthy, but it's still refined, right? So if you eat foods closest to its natural source, meaning if you eat a potato, that's quite close to its natural source, right? It's just been pulled out of the ground or something like that. And then same with meat, it's just like, you just killed a cow or some shit and it's the same thing. Whereas, like something like Pop-Tarts, all those junk food things that have got like loads of refined processes, that's not gonna fill you up a lot. However, it is gonna make you quite fat. So that's step number one, fix your environment. That was quite a long-winded one. The rest won't be that long-winded. That's just telling you more about junk food and how your brain is actually attracted to it. Now, step number two is manage your appetite. Now, what do I mean by manage your appetite? It was just eat like healthy food, you know? But if you eat, say for example, you eat, like I said, a croissant or something, again, that's not gonna give you much satiety because it's not high in fiber, it's not high in protein. However, it's very high in refined carbohydrates and fats again. So the food that will give you probably the most satiety would be high in protein, high in carb carbohydrates, low in fat and moderately platable, right? So that's not again saying that fat makes you fat, it definitely doesn't, however, that's just basically the, what we could say, macronutrient ratio of the foods that will most likely make you feel more full. And again, this does link in with the neuroscience with the brain stem, stuff like this. So high protein, high fiber, low fat, and moderately platable. Now, when I mean platable, what do I mean by platable? Platable is just basically how nice the food is probably gonna taste. For example, pizza would be like right up there when it comes to platability. Broccoli would be right down here. Now, you, can, you know which food is you're gonna overconsume and which food you're not. So the food that provides more satiety are the foods that are probably, not probably, definitely are less processed 
and more closer to their original source. And one thing I have to mention as well is that when it comes to carbohydrates, again, I would stay away from the refined carbohydrates. However, I would stick to the carbohydrates rich in water content, meaning say oats, potatoes, sweet potatoes, beans, all these kind of carbohydrates, they will be high in water content and they will actually fill you up a lot more. So compare oats to bread. Oats has a lot more water content and it's less refined than bread. And it's probably got a higher protein intake as well and more fiber. So those are all the properties and to stay more satisfied on a diet. Now, number third is manage the food reward. The food reward is basically, and just like, you know, the, the foods that reward you most of the time, donuts, cookies, pizza, and stuff like this. And when I mean manage it, again, fix your environment, try and like not to expose yourself to this. And when you do become stressed, which I'll get into later, is that you will start overeating and a lot of people do this. However, some people, when they get stressed, they don't. However, I digress, I'll get into that later. Now, when it comes to food reward, again, it comes to the platability of the food. So if the food, again, is high in carbohydrates and fat as well, the, plat the food will most likely be more platable. And of course, in today's age, if it's also refined, like 80% of the junk food is, in fact, probably all of the junk food is, I was gonna say 80% of the food, then, you're in big trouble, right? So I'm not saying you can't eat like any junk food at all. You definitely can. Probably just do like 90% or 80% of your diet good, 10% of your diet bad. However, it's just about managing the food reward and when you can have it and when you can't have it. So number four is sleep. Manage your sleep. A lot of people don't understand how big sleep of a deal is when it comes to managing your appetite, right? It really does play a big part. So um. I don't want to get too much into this because I know a lot of people just want a direct answer. So I want to tell you sleep about eight hours. However, that said, some people can tolerate lower sleep hours. For example, some people can sleep six hours. However, I do not recommend you sleep less than six hours because you you wouldn't even know, like some people don't notice that as like cognitive disadvantages, right? Meaning they can't they can't actually carry out. A function as good as they could if they slept more they don't even notice this so anyway that's basically managing managing your sleep and again coming back to the science there has been loads of studies showing that people that sleep less than like six hours do actually eat a lot more and it's only maybe 100 to 200 calories and i know you're going to say okay yeah but he's awake he's walking so his metabolic rate is going to be higher true but when it actually comes down to down to the nitty-gritty down to the calories that the calorie surplus is still maybe 100 to 200 more because of the effects it gives to your brain and then you eat more. So that's basically sleep, right? Now, number five is move. Move around, move. That's basically what life is, right? If you come back again to the evolution, back to our ancestors, just moving, it's walking, it's hunting, stuff like this. If you're just laying around, sitting all the time, then it's not gonna work out, right? You will expand more calories as well. However, one thing I have to notice, notice, note, is that when some people do cardio, some people get very hungry afterwards, some people won't get hungry at all, and that's okay, but walking most likely won't really give you any like disadvantage effects. And bottom line, even if it does make you hungry after you like do activity, it still doesn't matter because you still maybe burn 500 calories do an activity and maybe you only consume one or 200 calories depending on what food you eat of course if you just eat a piece of fruit after that and you feel good then that's fine however if you just like pig out then what's the point of even doing the activity in the first place so that's number five number six managing your stress coming on to the last one the video is it's a long one but it should be a good one so managing your stress as I said in the midpoint of the video I said I'm going to talk about stress and this does relate to higher food intake for example, some people might get very stressed and at the end of the day, they just think, oh, I might as well just eat. And it does actually make them feel a lot better, right? especially the platable foods. Again, this is the pizza, the donut, stuff like this. And they do actually kind of reduce your stress level in a way. Now, one suggestion and one recommendation I would recommend is find other ways to do it. Instead, eat the healthiest, uh, satisfying foods like potatoes, meat, stuff like this. And then maybe... You can do something like meditation and um, read books or watch day night and videos that relax you and stuff. <laughs> no, only joking, but you know what I'm saying? Do something else that will relax you instead of 
eating now i know this will be hard for a lot of people because let's face it eating the convenient foods the potato chips the bread the chocolates they're very convenient right it doesn't take a lot of effort and stuff to do it but let's just let's just give another recommendation of doing something else that you enjoy maybe watch tv i don't really i'm not a big fan of tv myself but just do something else except from eating now those are basically the six factors when it comes to preventing um, overeating and basically gaining weight now let's face it no one comes to me no one comes to you or anyone that helps people lose fat and they don't come to you say um i want to lose fat but i don't mind gaining it back again very very little people want want that they basically want to lose fat and keep it off now my recommendation is to eat a healthier diet and highly satisfying foods at the start of the video i said people that are doing if it fits your macros this might be interesting for you and the reason why i said that is because if you're eating chocolates uh, during the day and you're still on a calorie deficit and losing fat that's fine but over the long run are you gonna like when you come off this diet are you still gonna do the if it fits your macros strictly and without counting your calories sustain that body fat percentage probably not but again it's individual preference coming in again so that's it avoid the highly platable foods like pizza donuts stuff like this and increase the amount of food you eat from the high satiety foods like potatoes meat all the foods that are basically closer to their natural sources basically most of the things that come from the ground and most of the animals for the protein sources of course you can obviously eat the plant-based sources as well however i hope you enjoyed the video and this video what i must say is that it is basically based from a book called The Hungry Brain by Stefan, Stefan Gayune. I think I said his name right. Stefan Gayune. Yeah, I think maybe I didn't, but excuse me for that. But anyway, yeah, The Hungry Brain is a good book, man. If you want to know the real science behind it. But that's basically where I got most of the information from. And that's why I'm telling you guys. Again, I'm not going to tell you all about the book and stuff because that's just unethical of me anyway. Because it's his book. You should buy his book. But anyway, that's just to help you. Stay positive, stay smiling, and as always, control the food environment, avoid the high, highly palatable foods, eat more higher satisfying foods, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Stay positive, stay smiling. <laughs>